So this is a 41 year old gentleman. He's got long standing angst spawn, very common in our part of the world. He's got increasing difficulty in mobility. He's got a stiff neck and spine, it's all fused, it's one block of bone. Uh, the important thing is there's no pain. His HLA B27 is on positive. He's got osseous ankylosis of both hips. Hips show about 30 degrees of fixed flexion deformity. And both knees actually have full range of movement. This pattern of angst spawn that we see in India, very typically uh, the knees are spared. Uh, so it's good to have uh, spinal uh, surgeons in the, um, in the panel. So the important thing here is uh, that's how he is. His main complaint though is unable to see straight. So that's his main complaint. So um, uh, shall I proceed then? Yeah. Please go ahead and yeah. feel free to uh, both uh, use your judgment about what you want to present and what you want to ask the panel. And I think it's your call and why don't you do it and we'll do that for each of the speakers. So let's ask the, the arthroplasty surgeons, yeah. Uh, Anil, uh, uh, at this point he's presented to you, what did you do? I would definitely take an X-ray of the spine, number one. Uh, okay, uh, here you go. Assess, yes, and then obviously get his, uh, he, he, like you said, his predominant problem, he can't see straight. That's right, so that's your, that's the X-rays I've given you? Yes, so I think, uh, Correcting his hip first or his spine first would be the decision. I think we would talk to the spine team also. Uh, Amar, 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 these are the x-rays, Amar. How would you like to go forward? Yeah, this is a spine problem. Um, he's got to get his spine fixed first, and then we'll get to the hips. Uh, but um, uh, I, I can't believe I said it's a spine problem first. Hey, Vijay, can I ask you a question? On the exam, to the point that Amar just brought up, how do you decide how much of the problem is the spine and how much is the hips? Are you using your exam or are you using the radiographs? How are you figuring that out? Because it's obviously some of both, right? As we discussed the morning, uh, Dan, it's a complex issue. That's really the focus of it. And, you know, it varies to patient to patient, I think. So that's the whole reason for this presentation, yeah. So uh, Amar thinks, uh, so you would, uh, the spinal colleagues would, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the names of the spinal colleagues. Yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, so, um, oh, I don't know if the mic is. Is this my, yeah. So I think it, you know, it's a very interesting case from a spine perspective that you present because when we think about from a spine surgeon's perspective ankylosing spondylitis, you know, we're thinking about cervical thoracic junction and uh, chin brow angle. Uh, when I look at this patient, however, if I was to imagine them being supine, I actually think the cervical thoracic junction looks okay, although we don't have um, films focusing in on this area. And it really looks like a, a lumbar spine issue and, um, you know, I would agree with what's been said before. I, I would, not knowing anything about um, the arthroplasty side of this, I, I would lean towards uh, doing something in the lumbar spine. And um, in this kind of a case, as a spine surgeon, I think we do think about sort of getting many points of fixation because generally the bone is, is, is not very strong in the spine and they're already auto-fused, so just um, trying to hold the fixation can be quite challenging. Yeah, I'd agree with that. So uh, to answering Dan's question, if you think that the spine is going to be needed, uh, my personal opinion is to get the spine done so that you, at least you know a roadmap of how to put your hips in. Otherwise, you are just in, you know, you're, you're totally blind there. So and this, this falls in the category of a big deformity, right? So it's a huge deformity that you can't really blow that off and just deal with the hips. So I think uh, as a panel, we are in agreement with that. Yeah? Anybody with a disagreement? I disagree. Yes, please, Rajesh. We, as a rule, always do fused hips first. Okay, if the perfect. hips are fused, they have to be okay. done first. And there are several uh, reasons. Sure, yeah. But it also depends on the degree of, as Dan said, the degree of uh, spinal deformity, yeah. Okay, let's see how this case goes. So this is the uh, working out the uh, spinal pelvic uh, parameters that we discussed all morning, sickle slope. So um, uh, just for the sake of the audience, uh, it is sort of uh, stuck sitting, you can see that. The pelvic tilt is very much on the higher side. And uh, uh, the, uh, I think the sp we call it the lumbosacral angle, but uh, the spine surgeons will call it the lumbar lordosis as 33. So the spine colleagues, uh, Dr. Qureshi, uh, what are your comments on that, after the, knowing the values? Yeah, let's try a different mic. Sorry. Um, so yeah, I, I think the numbers, you know, you can see a significant uh, mismatch in terms of the uh, 
lumbosacral uh, lordosis versus the uh, pelvic incidence. And if we're thinking about this, I think Dr. Iyer presented about the different osteotomies that we do and when we need to get a significant correction um, through the lumbar spine here, this is where sort of the higher level osteotomies where we're, you know, really thinking about either a pedicle subtraction or vertebral column resection type of an osteotomy to try to um, correct would be uh, probably the, the uh, yeah, surgical so treatment. Yeah, that's exactly what our uh, spinal colleagues in our team said as well. So our spine colleagues wanted to do a uh, pedicle subtraction osteotomy at L4. So that was the, uh, that was the, um, so we, we hip surgeons call it a stuck in sitting. You can see the very high posterior pelvic tilt there. So the plan uh, was that uh, the fixed posterior tilt of the pelvis, uh, uh, gross kyphosis, as Dan said, you know, the degree it matters. And the risk of hip dislocation, you know, if the hip surgery is uh, done first, followed by some other spine correction, then your standard is chance of dislocation. So that was our reasoning. So we offered him a spinal surgery first, a particular subtraction osteotomy at L4 level, followed by bilateral fusion takedown. However, the patient was, not, was very keen to have only hip surgery because somebody had told him that spine surgery is very dangerous and he may have neurological complications. The neighbor probably told him. So he decided to have the hip first. So we had no choice. So now we have to do the, spine, uh, the hips first. We have no choice in this matter. Although theoretically, we would like to do the spine first. So that's how it was. Uh, so we discussed this in the morning. Uh, the strategies would be to use a dual mobility or you can use, uh, as uh, Dr. Skalko very elegantly uh, summarized, some kind of version comp uh, compensation. So we use a digital inclometer, which is available to everyone on your cell phones. You can use it to measure both your femoral version as well as the combined version. So the only thing that you don't have is your uh, astabular version. So the combined version minus your femoral version will give you the astabular version. That's a very uh, handy tool that you have in the OR to get all these parameters in a very objective uh, way. So that's what we did. And uh, that's what we used, the penetral 52 socket, 36 uh, head and uh, Korai stem. That was the first uh, 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 fusion takedown. And a gap of four days, we did the second one. And that is three months later's clinical result. You can see that it's now comfortable. Uh, you could hardly sit before. It's comfortable sitting. Uh, supine, they can see they still has a thoracic or a spinal deformity. But standing, he still doesn't have vision in the front. So straight vision is still a problem. So we offered him a spine surgery at that time. Uh, However, he decided to defer the spine surgery for the same reason, and the patient chose, he said he'll have it next year. So that was 2018. And 2019, if you can see, he's got this vision. And that he's doing by, you can see he's extending his uh, hip. Uh, uh, so he's sort of compensating with his hips. And now he's got his vision just by extending his hips. So now the patient categorically refused spinal surgery, for sure, <laughs> because he got what he wanted, yeah. <laughs> Can I just make one comment yes, on that? Please, yeah. um, it's a great case and, you know, really shows the, uh, the power of sort of a, even a, just getting patients back to where they want to with the hip surgery. One of the comments you made in terms of him being scared of spine surgery, ankylosing spondylitis for spine surgeons, and I don't want to speak for my colleagues, but I think they would agree, even as a spine surgeon, that's a, that's a entity where we say this is, this is going to come with a 100% rate of complication. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is a very, very high rate of complication, and so it is not the standard deformity correction where we say, look, I mean, it's a 30% and you may want to do this. Um, ankylosing spondylitis, we try to avoid it whenever we can. Um, so th this is an outstanding result. Uh, so you can see the, uh, the improvement in the sagittal balance following a hip surgery, you can see that well. Now, uh, the question okay. now is whether the hip is at risk. So that's how the supine film looks. But in fact, actually, spinal colleagues want to do a standing film. And that's how it looks on standing. That is, that is worrying. And, uh, but that, that's, that's, that's how it goes. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think it's an interesting case just because when we think, again, as spine surgeons about like a chin on chest deformity um, in ankylosing spondylitis, we always think about correcting from sort of the base up and sort of achieving correction lumbar spine and then sort of seeing and then, and then extending to the cervical thoracic junction and beyond. Um, it's interesting, again, like we corrected really truly at the base of the spine through the hip joint and, and the patient is compensating and, and seeing. So I think that in principle is interesting. But I would agree that, you know, the driver of his deformity in this case, at least in part, is that lumbar kyphosis. So, yeah, thanks. Jay, that's a great uh, case. May I, 